Braveheart, Urban Ice, Coach Mad Hatters, Urban Creatrix, and Crimson Velvet VIPs. Hello. Happy, about to say happy Saturday. Happy Friday. Am I rushing? I'm rushing the timeline. Ugh, what is that all about? Okay, so welcome to my Friday evening. What time is it? Yes. Welcome to my Friday evening. And I wanted to come and give you some insights that I've been toggling around back and forth for the last 24 hours. So yesterday I bumped into a story actually in the form of an audio book that is on YouTube that I will be sharing with you shortly because it is moving me into some of the most complex thoughts and, 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 and contemplations, if you will. It was the first thing that I thought of when I got up in the morning. And that's how I usually can tell what has been residing in my soul or in my spirit overnight is whatever it is that comes to my mind the moment I come back into consciousness. This story was it. The audio book is two hours, 13 minutes. Let's see. Yes. Two hours, 14 minutes. Let's say that. So what I am asking if you are or you become interested by the end of this small suggestion, then may I ask that you schedule two hours to sit with the entire audiobook. That might be asking a lot for the ultra busy people, but when I say class was in session, class was in session. And if you're already familiar with this storyline, kudos to you, especially if you have found yourself diligent enough to follow it how about this? First of all, it resonates to, it, 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 it chimes a chord that's strong enough to have you explore the suggestions in real time. So I have been an ambassador of coaching by story. I want to say about seven years now, there are all sorts of principled power inside of storylines and not just storylines in the mundane reality of it all but the ancient stories the mystical stories the mythology of it all and quite honestly I have come across in, in my walks of life have come across many people who are really truly in tune to stories and they treat them way beyond entertainment. And then those that just figure words are words and they show up to be entertained. They want to be distracted in some kind of way. I actually use stories as a very significant and valuable tool in the learning process, whether it is personal learning or professional learning, whether it's individually or collectively. Because I have been waving this banner and slowly but surely building the momentum around self-discovery and what those journeys look like or could feel like so that more and more people can become in tuned with being aware that they are actually on a journey day to day. And some folks are on multiple journeys simultaneously, all depending on the experience they are cultivating or the experiences that themselves and the divine are participating to cultivate. However you wanna look at that. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day the common denominator is still all around one being able to know thyself. So what does knowing thyself consist of? 
what is that all about, really? It sounds really, really good. But I wonder if us as individuals are actually about that life. Are we serious about getting to know ourselves or are we still caught up in the perpetuation that says we ought to be knowing everything outside of ourselves first and foremost from the outside in that's the that's the mainstream trendy advice deal with all the social outside interpersonal stuff and completely ignore your inside, your intrapersonal stuff. And you don't have to take my word for it. Just take a consensus. Just be aware of how the messages are coming through with regards to how you deal with you and others. It's all situated with dealing with everything externally. You have to go to these expensive, you have to go through these expensive therapy sessions or get into some high priced program in order for you to have safe space to talk about all the things that are going on with you with regards to you. And it is, in my opinion, more, mm, more of a dense nature when you have to pay attention to you and consider you and speak up for you and defend you and go to bat for you and cheer for you and contemplate for you and be objective for you to be your own court and counsel. And yes, many logical folks will say, well, how can you possibly do that? You need objectivity from others. You need to be able to be, be, be held accountable by others. And I won't take anything from that. I promise you I won't. But I do truly believe that there is a more significant view when one is reflecting upon itself when one uses its first eye, it closes its second and third physical eyes and it opens up its first eye. It's still amazing. Still, here we are with the trendy vocabulary that we have signed on to utilize, not realizing that words really do have an effect. And that's what this storyline is about, first and foremost, even though it is riddled. So I'll say that if you do not have patience for a story to unfold, then this may not be the story for you, but then that's going to be a tragedy because it is some nuggets in this two-hour audiobook. So I'm going to try to refrain from even calling it like an audio book because usually when you use those type of terms, it's expected that it's going to entertain you and, you know, put you in the spirit to want to rate it and all it and review it and all this other kind of stuff like what I'm doing right now. <laughs> but I will say it has its moments when it's entertaining because Somewhere in the back of your mind, well, how about this? Somewhere in the back of my mind, it was always like, okay, there is a catch somewhere. And it was, it is. There is a major catch, but nothing like what I was expecting. So I'm gonna say, moving into this, that if I had, if I had to give advice to myself prior to bumping into this story, what I would have told myself is to suspend all my preconceived notions of what I think about this world. Because what I know for a fact is that the story is consisted upon two people who are, two people who are wealthy, two people who are male, and two people who are European, I'm just going to say. Um, I, I want I want to say two white rich males, okay, just to keep it simple. So 
there are things, there are some, there are some ideologies or there are some things exchanged inside of the conversations that I know does not fit my reality at all. And yet it was still chock full of these intimate details that were simple, but powerful, simple, but complicated. And so now I grapple. And I wanted to come up here and share mainly because I know I am not the only one grappling with such dilemmas. I also know that I am not the only one who is sitting in quietude or journaling or having these conversations with self. I know that I am not the only one that is sitting in solitude and aligning my interior dialogues. So for the sake of me knowing that I am not the only one, I am just passing it along. If you feel nudged to tap in to this storyline, take your notes, schedule two hours for yourself, put your headphones on, have your notebook, your whatever you're going to write with, your tasty beverage. I would suggest that you don't try to... Um, especially if, you, if you're challenged with studying. If you're challenged with pulling lessons from things, I would suggest that you enter it, engage it, not on a full stomach, but not on an empty stomach, but have a tasty beverage, make sure your bladder is empty and you have, light a candle. Um, those of us that like, because I study to jazz sometimes, mellow, smooth, mellow grooves, and it, it tends to, to hold better. So, the, so um, and I'm trying to think, because I want to say about two years ago, I put together a study regimen for folks that were challenging, folks that were having challenge being, uh, what is it called? Uh, intuitive intuitive studies where you are intuitively led, where you don't necessarily have a facilitator or a teacher or mentor or coach right there, you know, guiding you through. You, you are pretty much um, self-paced. So if I can find that, I will try to put that up on the blog so that you'll have reference. But I just gave you the gist of it when it comes to studying. So since I was a kid, before it was even a thing, ADHD or my inability to stay focused on one thing for a specific amount of time was always a challenge. My mind is always jumping, it's firing, it's clicking, it's, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off, it's up, it's down, it's around and around. It does all these things. And for a long time, before I started studying it myself for myself, I always felt broken. I always felt like I was in this, in these, I was always finding myself in these spaces with folks that concentrated off of, off the natural, like could stay to my, one of my older sisters loved these huge puzzles. And I mean, like they would have these little teeny pieces, like 1200 pieces, and she would lay them all out on the floor. And just me seeing that pile of puzzle pieces would be intimidating. Like, who's about to do all of this like this? <laughs> so there were many things that I was shy away from. The only thing that I can think of right now that held such substance for me to really be captivated by it were books and stories. Not even really like films or cartoons or moving pictures. No, I needed things that respected my imagination. So give me enough and allow my mind to depict what's being said. <laughs> Can you feel my excitement? <laughs> okay, so let's get to it, right? This is... Uh, the Instant Millionaire. And like I said, it is on YouTube. So uh, make sure that you, this is, um, what in the world? Flomix Ventures is the one that I am rocking with. I'm not even sure if there is an alternative, but um, yeah, it's a really, really good story. Now, 
I will also make note that it was published in 1993. So it is not necessarily what will be called uh, new age, new aged. It's been, a while, it's been around for a while. I'm really amazed that yesterday was the first time that I had ever heard about it, but that's my arrogance in thinking that I've read every book or should know about every single book in this entire world. <laughs> <laughs> so knowing that is that that is impossible I will reel it in my expectations sometimes just throw me off but anywho I am very grateful that I bumped in to this storyline it's almost like the instant that I bumped into oh my gosh and wait a minute hold on oh, uh, how do I find it the minute let's see the one hour, hold on, I'm, not, I'm going to stop guessing. Just give me just a moment so that I can. Um, uh, why do I want to call it like the minute manager or something? The one minute manager. Or not even the, okay, so the minute manager. Um, it feels like when I first bumped into this book, The Minute Manager, which let's see. You know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna overcrowd the message. We're gonna stick with the instant millionaire for now. Maybe I'll do a separate one for um, the one minute manager since that has come up in this conversation. So <laughs> This is what I had to do for myself after I finished it last night. So as I said, I ran through the whole thing last night and it had, my spirit was just like, oh my gosh, like it's so simple, but it's so complicated and it challenges just about every single thing I know about generating wealth, meaning physical and non-physical monies or currencies and how that translate into wealth. And quite honestly, this storyline is not speaking specifically about finances or how to get it or no quick fixes, none of that. Simple but complicated. So what I'm hoping is that if you do find yourself in the midst of this storyline, that you will take massive notes. What I'm also hoping is that maybe if you're interested, that we can have a conversation and not we as in like the public and the masses and folks that I don't know. I am honestly speaking to my Brave Hearts, my Urbanites, my Coach Mad Hatters, my Urban Creatrix, and my Crimson Velvet VIPs. I am also putting together an orientation segment where I break down what those characteristics or these archetypes within my learning membership, who they are and what it means to them and why they are studying with me. What's so special about me? <laughs> <laughs> me and my big sister my oldest sister Reese um, she just retired 42 years in um, in the world of special policing I, I, me personally like to call her like secret service but that's not what she was <laughs> but she was with them folks <laughs> she was with them folks because she had to have this top secret clearance and her life had to be tidy. And it was just things that required her to be her so that she could excel in what it is that she was doing. Okay, so now she has retired and she's moving into a new genre of profession. So believe it or not, since 2013, me and her have been talking 
and and just having these moments with her journey into retirement and now that she's reached that it's amazing for one to see our conversations evolve specifically around her preparedness for a new not only a new journey a new career a new profession because the profession that she was in she's leaving or has left out while she is in leadership supervisory managerial meaning she has supported now what she's understanding is that she's she has now she's closed that significant chapter or multi-chapter and now she's opening up a brand new fresh page what will it be like what is it ever like when one is staring at the blank page at the blank canvas at the music sheet with no notes on it yet like what happens when you know you are and 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 you are honestly prepared for this thing. <laughs> that's the part that's beginning to amaze me and the people that I'm finding myself conversing with is that more and more, I am having the conversations with people who use their time wisely or did not fuck around when it was time to meditate when it was time to study when it was time to get in solitude and that they did not fall into these voids or these pockets of major distractions that doesn't mean everybody's robotic around me no we have our down days have our days we don't feel so good have our days we crappy as fuck just have our days we feel like a penny with a hole in it then there are days which we take advantage of you know what let me dig into this while I feel like it. Let me study this. Let me get some notes down. Let me be able to gather things that'll help me clarify, right? And it feels like there's a point that I was going to make probably about 10 minutes ago. And I am already, it, it slipped, it's gone. I mean, if it comes back before um, I get up off of here, then wonderful. If not, I will try to put it in the notes. Um, but honestly, um, what I would have told myself two days ago prior to getting ready to read this or in, engage this storyline, I would have told myself, slow down on what you think you know <laughs> and just be open to what is going to be revealed to you. There is nothing that says you have to agree with any of it. You're going to check it out. Because wildly enough, while listening to it, within the two hours, I went back and forth with whether I agreed or not. And like I said earlier, I think many of mine, uh, as far as what it is that I disagree with, just came through the conversation from the white, rich male perspective. But even, like I said, even so, there were still things, is the, the, how about this? The moment I decided to be patient with the story, things really truly began to reveal itself to me. Because it what it's not my story. And so how dare me think I'm gonna go in and be rearranged to the point where I'm gonna be judging. <laughs> so that was one key thing that um, once again, the lesson comes up, especially how I engage the story. And I already know all these things. And that's the amazing part about this life's journey is that even though you know it, you will be reminded of some of the more longer life's lessons because you're ever flow in and out of it, right? This storyline puts you in the pocket. And I'm curious to see, which is one of the reasons why I'm extending the invitation for us to have these conversations and as well as adhere to the yes that I gave my son about podcasts because often he's mom you need to get with the you need to get with the podcast and you really need to get your podcast I'm like okay fine and even my um 
niece said it just within days, like, auntie, you really need to get a podcast going. I get all of that. <laughs> I really do. I get all of it. Um, and I'm moving towards it. And I am in a grief. But I will state it here as I've stated to them that I don't necessarily want to be podcasting alone. So I have been formulating my roster that I'm sending out invitations for um, co-conversationalist. And I'm, I'm, I, I've even been toying back and forth because I don't necessarily want special guests. I would like collaborators to those that are part of whatever it is that we're like, how about this? Everyone's engaged in it. Everyone is already actively seeking whatever the topic is going to be. And so there will be a reciprocal exchange. Is that the same kind of like the same word? <laughs> a bountiful exchange, a, a solid reciprocity because everyone will be familiar with the context. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes along. And so if um, you find yourself wanting to talk about it, I say get in touch and let's do it. Let's get scheduled and let's hit record and let's just unhash this thing and talk about it. Because I believe that there are many things inside of this storyline that honestly is practical it is doable, it's adaptable, but it is going to require some study. It is going to be requiring or challenging around any type of paradigm shifting that has to take place before certain things can be implemented. But the interesting thing about this storyline is that it is spoken in plain language. It is not a quick, rich, a get quick, rich, yeah, it's none of that. <laughs> it's none of that. It, it speaks to a person's longevity versus swiftly, quickly microwavable. No, this is crock pot, conventional oven, slow cook, big mama's kitchen style. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm going to end it here and tell you, ask you, suggest you, you know, and you can thank me later. <laughs> I swear you can thank me later because I, I, it, and, and, and what's really interesting is that there are a few of my friends that if they do, because I haven't posted in a while, I don't know, I'm, I don't even know if anybody's going to come across this, but I got a few people that are popping up in my mind that I know personally that if they come across this and they go check it out, I'm almost certain what it is that's going to pop out to them or what it is that's going to grab them, even if it's in concert with what it is that they've already been telling themselves that need to align or change or shift or disintegrate, whatever. Something tells me that the storyline is going to affirm what they've already been in conversation with themselves about so yeah <laughs> I think that's about it um, yeah so I'm going to end with another soft invitation to tap into the Mystic Fools journey journaling series that I created 21 weeks dealing with 21 major, the 21 major arcana of the tarot. And it is a meditative cycle. And so I want to do a different update segment on the actual journaling series because some things have changed um, with regards to implementation. And um, I think I've made mention a couple of times in previous recordings that I am now on my third cycle of this journaling series. And so different things have happened with each cycle. Quite amazing when you have 
uh, prompters to meditate upon. And so things have been um, morphing into this point of view that I am now cultivating and I like it because what it does inside of my interior dialogue is give me 21 ancient entities to converse with or to be in communion with. And so looking at it from that perspective, my inquiries, especially when it's when I am in the mode to know thyself, my inquiries are structured and handled a little differently. Yeah, it's more of a participatory. And, and so just like red and the red and blue pillar say all the time that, you know, the divine speaks through symbols and signs. And so what is amazing to me is how things circle back. And it's, a, it's also been amazing to me is that something that I might have been challenged with for years, that all depending on how I structure my internal inquiry determines what gets revealed to me. That's spoken about in this storyline as well. So like I say, when I was listening to this, things were just firing off. Just, just it was clicking and it was firing and it was sparking. And it was just like, oh my stars, <laughs> here we go. So, yeah, I really am intrigued to find out. Um, it's okay. Let me slow down. <laughs> Those who had already been familiar with it, and if it grabbed hold to them whenever they found out about it if they implemented anything, how they worked for them, if did they have to tweak anything, did they have to urbanize it? You know, did they have to, like, what is it that they had to go through to engage this storyline? What did the storyline do for you? What did it do for you? So yeah, until next time, I wish you well. <laughs>